Hello all and welcome to Storytime episode 17, which is chapter 13 of The Blood King. As always, if you have not started this story from the beginning, I recommend you head on back to episode 4 of Storytime and start from there. Without further ado, here's chapter 13. Chapter 13. Vincent couldn't help but admire the way she held herself. Despite the fact that she was no challenge for the elemental witches that inhabited Blue Valley, she knew that they couldn't touch her. It almost made him smile at how thin the line she was walking on was. She rolled her eyes when she spotted him watching her, scoffing. She quickly dismissed herself from the group of adolescents she sat with and exited the cafe. But he wouldn't let her get away that easily. Leaving so soon, Calcinia, he asked as he walked a few metres behind her. If you're going to stalk me, at least try to be less noticeable, she snapped. He chuckled at the fire in her eyes before using his speed to catch up with her in a millisecond. Who said I was stalking you? She turned to him with an unconvinced expression. I can read every emotion that you give off, Vincent. Your current emotional state is being caused by the fact that you're stalking me. And what do you see, little witch? he asked. She sighed and stopped, turning to him. Apart from the obvious, intrigue, admiration, lust. Vincent frowned at that. He hadn't thought about it, but now that he did, she did have features and qualities that attracted him to her. Sometimes it's not the best to know exactly what you're feeling, she stated as she walked past him. I beg to differ, replied Vincent, his smirk appearing as he brushed his white blonde hair from his eyes. Your insight has granted me my own. Kelsey stopped and turned back to the old vampire who looked anything but his age. How old were you when you turned, Vincent? she asked out of curiosity. I was twenty-one when I was cursed, said Vincent. Figured I would make the most of it. And here we are, what, one, two millennia later? She asked with a smirk gracing her plump lips. And still you strive for something you cannot have. And what would that be, little witch? Asked Vincent. How could you possibly know what I want after meeting me all of one time before this? Her eyes looked saddened all of a sudden before a smile graced her lips. We might be ageless, but we grow older every day and every day we experience something we never expected. I suppose that's probably how you'll find what you want, Vincent. Unexpectedly. Vincent was silent as he watched the red-headed minx turn back around and begin walking once more. You didn't answer my question, little witch, he pointed out. Good night, Vincent, she replied. Then in a swirl of a white mist drawn from the night around her, she was gone. Vincent sighed as he stared at the spot she had been. Run all you want, little witch. I will get my answer one way or another. Kelsey sensed Janice as soon as she reappeared. She had no idea how long the young witch had been sitting on her front steps, but it was clearly long enough for her to think too much. Janice jumped in surprise at the new arrival. You can teleport? asked Janice. Kelsey shrugged only to places I've been before. Janice decided to drop the subject. How was school? Kelsey chuckled. I doubt you came here to ask me that. Janice sighed. Your cat came to speak to me. It appears you can solve a certain problem I have. Can I just? asked Kelsey. She wasn't the least bit concerned that Lunara had trudged off to see Janice. The cat appeared at her feet as if summoned, and Kelsey sensed through him the acrid smell of smoke from Janice's apartment. It appears I can. Janice frowned, glancing down at the cat. You told her? In a manner of speaking, Lunara yawned. Then he trotted up the steps and seemed to pass right through the front door. Strange that it's strong enough for you to smell it, said Kelsey. Janice turned back to Kelsey. You mean the emotions? Kelsey nodded. Dimitri arrived then, pulling up on his bike. Oh yay, visitors. Again. Aren't you a splash of sunshine? Janice grumbled. Kelsey smiled. Don't worry about him. He's just realising how stupid it was for him to enrol in school. I didn't sign up for being taunted either, Dimitri growled, flashing his fangs. He wheeled his bike around to the side of their house as Janice recoiled. Don't worry, he's harmless, said Kelsey. 
Anyway, I can't do it tonight, but I can see what I can do tomorrow. Janice had watched Dimitri until he disappeared, but nodded in reply. All right then, have a good night, Kelsey replied. She took a step, only to pause as her senses alerted her to another presence, one not nearly as kind and light as Janice. Janice frowned at the stranger at the top of the driveway. Were you expecting other visitors? Kelsey turned her head, spotting the black SUV stop at the top of the driveway. She felt determination mingled with confidence and just the slightest excitement and fear. The emotional waves rolling off the driver's aura becoming stronger. Dimitri, warned Kelsey. She could feel it as Dimitri paused in the garage, catching a whiff of whoever it was in the car. Unfamiliar. Dimitri replied as he seemed to appear next to her, the wind he'd cut through the only indication of his speed. What's wrong? asked Janice as she continued to look at the stranger. Kelsey's eyes widened as the driver jumped out, a crossbow in hand. Huntress! Dimitri hissed. He darted forward, but even he wasn't fast enough, an arrow flying right for him. Portega Neantron! shouted Kelsey. A wave of blue energy formed before Dimitri, like a barrier flexing and rippling with the power Kelsey fed it. The arrow hit it, then burst into flames and burned to ash. Another arrow fired from the crossbow and ended up the same way. Janice stood behind Kelsey as she watched with slight fear and amazement. What is she after? asked Janice. She's a hunter, most likely after Dimitri and Lawrence. They don't tend to like supernatural beings in general, but vampires are pretty high on the list, stated Kelsey, straining with the energy it was taking to hold the spell. Dimitri appeared behind the hunter with his vampiric speed, knocking the crossbow from her hands and avoiding the stake she shoved at his chest. Now, love, no need for violence, Dimitri warned. Kelsey closed her open hands and the barrier dropped. She took a few seconds to regain her composure before she began walking towards the huntress, her eyes sparking with anger. I need a name and I need it quickly, so give it up or I will do something you won't like, stated Kelsey. Shut it, witch, this doesn't concern you, snapped the hunter. Kelsey sighed and locked her power on the hunter, flinging her against the bonnet of the SUV and pinning her there. If you don't already know, that is my brother you're trying to kill. So yes, it does concern me. Let me go, ordered the hunter. Doesn't work that way, honey. You give me a name and I let you live, threatened Kelsey. Dimitri twirled the stake in his hands as the hunter watched Kelsey. Then he embedded it in the bonnet beside her head. Name, Huntress, said Dimitri. Calm and fur, she snapped. Not yours, Kelsey rolled her eyes. I couldn't care less about your name. I want the name of the person who sent you. That's information you're not privy to, snapped the Huntress. Well then, looks like you'll be stuck there for a while, said Kelsey. What do you mean, asked the Huntress as Kelsey turned back towards the house. Well, I'm not sticking around for hours for you to spill the beans, so I think I'll go cook some dinner while I wait, said Kelsey. Maybe breakfast as well, depends on how persistent you are. You're going to starve me out, asked the Huntress, somewhat surprised. Well, I'd hardly want to hurt that pretty face of yours. The Hunter Association doesn't take kindly to acts of violence against them, stated Kelsey. Come on. Janice, confused as to what was happening, waited near the front steps for Dimitri and Kelsey to explain. Kelsey paused when she heard the Huntress sigh. I'm not from the Hunter Association, she said. I work for Lady Victoria. Kelsey turned back to the Huntress and released her from the spell. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? asked Kelsey. The Huntress glared at her after she'd picked herself up from the ground, but Kelsey paid her no attention as she turned to her brother. What have you done to piss off the Romulus coven? Dimitri met his sister's stare before he turned away, muttering his answer. I'm sorry, what? asked Kelsey. Why don't you ever ask Lawrence these things? It could have been him, Dimitri complained, because it's usually not him that causes trouble. He's the one that cleans up after your messes, so you both don't have to call me in to do it. Now, what did you do? Kelsey demanded. I may have accidentally, mind you, killed the firstborn boy in a millennium, replied Dimitri. Kelsey sighed as she moved her hands to her temples, rubbing slowly. Get inside. I'll deal with you later. Dimitri began to speak up, but one glare from Kelsey and he was moving towards the house. Kelsey turned to Janice. I'm sorry, I've got a few pressing matters to deal with at the moment that I'm sure you'd rather not be around for. I'll be at your apartment tomorrow afternoon. Janice nodded. Uh, sure? 
Oh, before I forget, stated Kelsey. She snapped her fingers and a covenant compendium appeared in her hands. I've acquired another copy if you'd like to study it for yourself. Just don't try any of the spells in it without supervision yet, okay? I still haven't made a decision on learning yet, Janice admitted. Figured you had some questions. The book can answer you in an objective sense. Janice nodded, taking the book from Kelsey. Thank you for agreeing to do this for me. Kelsey nodded. No problem. After Janice left, Kelsey looked back at the Huntress, who stood glaring at the retreating Dimitri. Hey, you, trigger fingers, get Lady Victoria on the phone. I would have words with the supposed Queen of Witches. Well, that's it for episode 17, chapter 13 of The Blood King. Uh, what did you guys think? Hopefully the story is ramping up a little bit there. Let me know down in the comments. I'll see you guys next time. Stay happy and healthy. Bye.